G'day guys, this is your bubbly host H2O Queen. Uh, I am so sorry that it has taken me so long to, to make a regular upload video. I have had technical difficulties trying to make this work. I will show you my project. So this is going to be a PowerPoint presentation and it is with the Pokemon Jewel version 7.0.0 in-depth guide. So this is with regards to the Z-moves that were released. Uh, I meant to do this a while back uh, and I'm aware that a couple of things in the guide have been updated since I last made this but I have really struggled to try and get this out publicly just because with my gaming PC it's not really where it's supposed to be. I have it but I can't use it so this is my first time I'm actually on it trying to use it. It's still, I still can't get it working because it's got missing components etc so I'm still going to be with the iPad for a while until I can get this thing to work but for now at least I've got this I can get this PowerPoint presentation out which is very important to me so I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy what I'm about to present and let's get into it so this is the Pokemon Duel version 7.0 in-depth guide so Z moves explained Z moves were introduced in December 2018 exclusive to only three types fire, water, and grass. Prior to version 7.0, when Zemus were engaged, the original color was green. When version 7.0 was released, green was replaced to pink. These colors simply represent a standard Z-move with no status or ability, much like Hydro Pump or Blue Moon Blast, which does not incur a status effect or ability when knocked out or attacked into or onto. For example, with the figure standard wheel, some slices have an active or non-active wheel slice. Since Z-moves have been improved and introduced in the February 13th update, the Z-moves are complex and can be a bit of a steep learning curve, especially if you are newly playing Pokemon Duel in 2019. On the next page, I show you what a non-active Z wheel looks like when engaged before and after version 7.0. I remember you Showtime, this one goes out to you because you're saying you couldn't remember it. So here we go. So that was what it used to look like originally. Um, that was a regular Z move uh, pre version 7.0 in action. And this is what a regular Z move wheel looks like in version 7.0 in action so i managed to, i took screenshots of the zemus when they first come out because it was all the rage it was very exciting so as you can see they've just made a color variation on the original to the new and i'm actually i appreciate the pink more because it seems more of a neutral color so i'm happy that they've changed it so zemus explained further we now understand non-active Z moves that have no status effect or movement causing effects. I will explain further the complex Z moves as they graduate from non-active into Z moves. An active Z move is a Z move that has the ability to affect your use of a Z move. An example is the figure being sent to the PC, Ultra Space and so forth. Some figures have the ability to inflict a status effect onto a figure or reduce a Z gauge. It's very important to learn and understand Z moves and also study them so you know what to use effectively at the time. To learn more about a Z move, you can go to the library in the settings menu and click on a button that says Z move. Since they have uh, done an update recently, I have noticed now you can actually check the Z moves whilst in the jewel as well, which is fantastic. So you just gotta click on the opponent's figure and then you will see like a Japanese print and that says that looks like this image and it says Z move and you can quickly check out what the Z move is but I still find that a little bit difficult because if your opponent is playing fast you might not be able to read it so it's really important that you just sit down and read your Z moves first or you can have this on standby my guide So also remember Zemu still apply to the original rules of the game. Purple knocks out white, white knocks out miss, gold onto purple, etc. If a Zemu is a purple star attack and your opponent slices gold, your figure will be knocked out. 
So this is an active Z move wheel in action. So meaning it actually does something to the opponent that actively takes the field. So Z moves by type. In the following slides, I will go into detail as to what each Z move does and what they look like. Without further ado, thank you credit to Andy23V and from Pokemon Duel Reddit for, for the information on all Z moves available. And also to the wonderful Sherry Davis uh, for being my assistant in room matches as we activated all the Z moves so I could take screenshots. That was a whole heap of fun and I'm really happy what I did this about two or three weeks ago so I'm really happy now that this is finally going live uh, and that from all your efforts Sherry that we can finally get this underway so this is um, what the Z moves will look like and we are starting off with normal and this is breakneck blitz so it's non-active so again non-active means that it, it just simply knocks the opponent out Whereas an active wheel slide actually inflicts a, a Z move or it KOs it like straight to the PC or other, some other type of ability. So, uh, Breakneck Blitz. Uh, so, actually, Pokemon knocked out by this attack damage, a temporary excluded from the duel, returning to the bench seven turns later. Fighting. All out pummeling. Non active. Attaches a cracked marker to opposing Pokemon in a straight line directly behind the battle opponent. Flying. Supersonic strike. Non-active. Any Pokemon adjacent to the battle opponent other than this Pokemon spin. Those that spin white attacks move to the bench. This Pokemon gains weight 3. Poison, Acid Downpour, and it is active. All opposing Pokemon on the field spin. Those that spin white attacks become poisoned. So this is very useful in a poison strategic deck, especially if you are using Gengar or even with Nagadanel as well. So if you really want to get the poison jabbing left, right and center, as we know SHD likes to do, this uh, having poison type figures are absolutely awesome and can hinder and also annoy, especially coupled with Venusaur. Ground, Tectonic Rage. It's active, knocks out battle opponent. So it's a four star purple and this is very very awesome against blue and white figures. Definitely do not use this Z move if you are facing against a heavy gold attacker aka Absol. Rock Continental Crush. It's an active Z move. The battle opponent and posing Pokemon adjacent to the battle opponent gain weight 9. So this is an absolute phenomenal, especially if you're wanting to build a weight team. Having a couple of weight Pokemon is really awesome, especially if coupled with Tapu Lili. As you know, Tapu Lili with Psyshock also inflicts weight. Uh, along with Alakazam, Mega Alakazam, you could be creating quite a, uh, a disabling uh, team for the opponent having to wait and therefore you could get a weight win So bug savage spin out Non-active Attaches an MP minus two marker to opposing Pokemon within two steps Ghost never-ending nightmare Non-active all opposing Pokemon on the field spin. Those that spin white attacks get an MP-1 marker. Steel, Corkscrew Crash. It's non-active. If the battle opponent is knocked out, 
Then after the battle, this Pokemon moves two steps away. So this move, or this type of Z move dump, uh, dealt by Steel is very, very critical. You have to be extremely cautious and very careful. If you have your goal uh, protected by a surround, meaning that you have one Pokemon on either side of your goal, be extremely careful if you happen to have a two or three MP Pokemon uh, absolutely looming towards you because this could be critical for your opponent to gain the win or it could also be critical for you to get the win uh, but it's very important that you keep your Pokemon directly on the goal to avoid being a uh, corkscrew crushed because uh, what can happen is is that if anyone is familiar with Blaziken with Jacklick, I very much this has been very profound with me and it has stayed with me since uh, RX Gaming was in a position where he had uh, his opponent's goal surrounded. However, with uh, the almighty Blaziken with Jet Kick, the opponent was able to reclaim their goal and knock out the opponent's figure due to this. So Corkscrew Crash can work much the same like Jet Kick and it could actually, uh, you could easily claim and take the opponent's goal from this uh, movement type ability which is absolutely fantastic. So we have Fire Inferno Overdrive. So it's an active Z move. The battle opponent and the Pokemon in a straight line directly behind it become burnt. Uh, very advantageous if you're running a fire deck and you can just use a flame sphere or flame energy to prevent them from being able to move. Also very useful again in a weight uh, deck again if you're trying to play strategically. Water Hydro Vortex. It's an active Z move. The battle opponent and opposing Pokemon in two steps of it become confused. Very useful uh, for yourself, especially if your opponent is crippled and it has like miss uh, segments between each of its attacking moves. Uh, it makes the opponent's team very weak and very susceptible to being knocked out. Grass, Bloom Doom, non-active. Removes all special conditions from your Pokemon. So this one is really nice, but we rarely see many grass, not unless you're running a Salivy. Uh, I have seen a major decrease in Decidueye. I see Decidueye very rarely used now. Electric Gigavolt Havoc. It's active. The battle opponent and a succession of Pokemon adjacent to the battle opponent other than this Pokemon become paralyzed. So very, very good. Uh, unfortunately, those Pokemon do not gain weight, which is unfortunate, but it's still very, very good though for the paralysis. Psychic Shattered Psych. One word for this Z move, it is absolutely lethal. If this Pokemon is, it's not active, if this Pokemon's on the field, this Pokemon moves to a point three steps away after battle. Now, this figure can be extremely, extremely scary. Why I say that is that they only literally have to step out from their entry point after take after coming out onto the field, take two steps away. If your uh, figure happens to be in a position like halfway down the field, you can easily, easily take the opponent's uh, position um, claim the seal that claim their entry point the next turn and especially if that psychic type is a 3 MP figure aka uh, Mew it could be really really scary especially if you don't have gold block or a figure that can immediately claim the goal there afterwards uh, one thing I have been really loving is been watching the Z moves unfold. They seriously remind me of Mandela's and especially when you have Pokemon like Celebi that can rewind time, you can actually see like how the two uh, Z moves overlap each other and it just looks really amazing. And I've actually noticed as well that the way that it colors up, no Z move is the same. So Ice, Sub-Zero Slammer. It's active. 
and opposing Pokemon in two steps become frozen. Uh, so this is a very, very uh, scary for the opponent, especially if there is a couple of Karems on the field, also coupled with Frostlass, because Frostlass can just hop over frozen Pokemon and capture them to their actual PC, so making it harder to rotate through. And especially with Karims on the field, it's just going to make it really hard to tag figures to unfreeze them, unless you're carrying scoop up plates, but scoop up plates are rarely seen because we're all too busy trying to carry double chance plates and X speeds and uh, twisted, twisted spoon plates, etc. So yeah, so this is, uh, so even though ice is not really as strong with regards to attack damage, but their Z moves are super scary. Dragon, devastating Drake. Active. A Pokemon on the field spins. If it spins a white, uh, spins a miss or a white attack of 120 damage or more, it is knocked out. Ah, uh, this is one of my least favorite Z moves. I don't mean it in a bad way, but it's really hard having to rely upon a wheel to determine if the Z move is actually effective. And it's not really that great. We don't see a lot of Primal Kyogres on the field. And even though we have figures like Necrozma and Dawnwind's Necrozma and, and Dusk Main. Uh, Necrozma, uh, even those are very high attacking, they don't always spin a favorable roll in order to knock out uh, your Pokemon. So I haven't tested it on my own figures to make it work, but I think it's more so for the opponent's figure. But yeah, it's 50-50. Dark. Black Hole Eclipse, non-active, reduces the opponent's Z-move gauge by two-thirds of its max wheel. Now this is an absolutely delightfully evil Z-move, uh, especially if your opponent requires a Z-move for whatever reason that is to either claim your goal or to protect their own goal. Uh, if their Z move gauge is reduced, especially if you have a whole thorough field of ghost figures, your opponent may actually never get a chance to activate their Z move throughout the duel because your dark types keep on reducing its gauge and I haven't seen it being done yet, but I could imagine that would definitely thwart a few people into rage quitting. Uh, so yeah, but it, it, it used at the right time and used wisely. This can really make or break a game So fairy twinkle tackle it's active Moves the battle opponent to the bench. So unfortunately this Z move does not cause the battle opponent to gain weight so it's <laughs> It's good to immediately get it off Away, especially if you're trying to protect your goal and it's threatening to take your goal or if you want to claim the opponent's goal vice versa and just by this simple Z move you can claim the opponent's goal the next turn then that's great but other than that if you just if you need to use it because it the opponent's wheel is a heavy Z move I would probably just hold off and just wait until you can use another figure um, not unless it's absolutely essential or critical to saving the game but yeah it's it does its job but it's and the animation is absolutely beautiful I love it but it's just not that great especially if you need to be able to do it more than just knocking it to back to the bench but it is a great Z move when required so Pikachu UX Catastro Pika it's active. Moves the battle opponent to the bench. So Catastropica is a, a very, very good Z move. It isn't used that much. I mean, it's got a hefty attack damage, but it's pretty much like a regular Z move. 
So this is Lunala's specialty. It's a menacing moon rays maelstrom. Active. The battle opponent temporarily moves to the ultra space, returning to the bench after seven turns. Opposing Pokemon adjacent to the battle opponent gain weight three. I have to say this is one of the best Z moves. Not that I'm biased because I use a Dusk Winds Necrozma, but it is absolutely beautiful, especially if you just need to have one less figure on the field uh, it's for your opponent, especially if it's an annoying figure that is causing the most havoc on your team. And it can also be very, very good as well, especially if your opponent has a heavy blue or white slice. But it's just really, it's got a nice touch onto it because it actually doesn't just send them to the PC or to the bench. It sends them flying to the ultra space for seven turns. So this is definitely a Z move to watch out for and don't take it lightly. Uh, and by all means, if you see this Pokemon thundering down the field, just get out of its way and uh, do what you can and be very, very careful as well, being right next to a Pokemon with Menacing Moonrays Maelstrom that even applies to Lunala as well as to uh, Dawnwind's Necrozma because especially if you've got your goal protected by a surround and you've got no goal block, it can just come and and take your goal like literally next turn so just be very very careful so always make sure that you are on the goal and if you've got no way to protect just make sure uh, that you always have one Pokemon at all times on the actual goal and then that way when they attack the next turn at least you're not going to get like a, a weight wind because of it and it's happened to me a couple of times so this is Solgaleo's specialty. This is Searing Sunrise Smash. It's non-active. The battle opponent temporarily moves to the Ultra Space, returning to the bench after seven turns. Unlike uh, Lunala or Dawn Winds Necrozma, it does not have a purple Z move. Instead, it is white, but it is still a very good Z move, and it is like the rest, or like a regular Z move. So this brings to the con conclusion of my uh, Z-Move guide. I really hope this helps guys. So you can use this as a reference while you're playing if you wish. So um, thanks again goes to Andy from Reddit for having the information about all the Z-Moves. And thank you very much to Sherry Davis for being my assistant with regard to getting all the Z-Moves it up I really appreciate this and I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation if you have any questions at all please make sure you put it in the comments below if you are new to my channel please make sure to subscribe and to like and I hope to see you again in further videos the studio bubbly host h2o queen over and out peace love light and joy and enjoy the rest of your day bye